So what makes the biggest difference? What makes the biggest difference between somebody that makes it in the music industry and somebody who doesn't? What are the characteristics of an individual so what that can handle all the pressure, that can handle the initial rejection that every artist faces? What makes the difference is the tenacity and the willpower to get back to the place of learning, to get back to the dojo. And that's what we're doing on this Wednesday. If you would like to learn more about some of the often overlooked features of Logic Pro, today we're covering the step editor extensively. Now, this is something that most people don't know about, I guarantee you. But what if it made a difference? I'm posing to you a question. What if this one lesson was the very beginning of the change that you have been seeking? Well, if you're interested in that, then we're about to find out. We're going to get into the step editor, y'all. You ready? Here we go. Man, I got to let it out today. Here we go. Go, you ready? Let's go. Hey guys, I don't take it lightly. Let's get into it here. Logic user guide, read by Eddie Gray. Let's go. Look, anybody else can do this, but they're not going to bring it the way that resources for the modern creative brings it. Make sure you sub. Make sure you share. One more time. Let's go! Let's go. Come on now. Woo! Let's go! <laughs> All right. I'm going to throw it out there. I think a, a lot of you are just not having fun. I really do. And it's not always about having fun all the time. But look, if we're going to do the very best thing in the entire known and unknown universe, which is to work on an amazing DAW such as this, I'm going to enjoy the ride. Full out. Play the whole thing all the way through. So it is Wednesday. I hope this transmission finds you well. This entire universe is brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com. We are so proud to be able to share these incredible resources. We're looking at all the numbers and figures, and there's just there's a lot of love going around, and I wanted to thank you for all the shares. I see it, right? All the reposts. I see it. Um, all the comments. I see them. Thank you so much for just being a part of this whole thing and i just want to remind you that without you really there simply isn't anything here so we thank you for the opportunity to be able to serve you at the highest level so with that out of the way my name is eddie gray and we've been doing this for the last couple weeks all right i guarantee you that most of you don't know about the step editor and if you don't i think this is a unique opportunity to be able to equip yourself with more tools without necessarily having to buy anything else, right? Sure, you can get another plugin. I'm sure you can get more gear, but why not take everything you have into consideration, learn it to the best of your ability, and then apply, 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 so you can get the results that you know you can get. You wouldn't have invested your time, energy, money, and resources if you didn't believe you could. And on top of that, we know you could. And if you're interested in what we do and how we help artists all over the world, you want to go ahead and check out hfmusicacademy.com. All right, let's jump into the step editor. It is time to get into it. I'm super elated, as you may have uh, gathered just by the initial energy. Uh, let's go, let's go. The step editor. 
This is somewhat obsolete, I would say, but still very relevant if you know how to use it. A graphical editor that can be used to create or edit MIDI note and controller data. So from the outset, we know that we can create and edit MIDI. Let's highlight that. So this is not for audio, right? Um, we'll see if we can use this with other formats. I mean, we know Drummer technically is MIDI, so we'll see if we can use it there as well. Same goes for the pattern format. We shall see. You can use the step editor to view and edit different MIDI event types shown as vertical beams or steps. So here's the second indication of what this world is all about. This is not the step sequencer new to 10.6, 10 10.5. It's the step editor. Again, a lot of people haven't really taken the time. I believe there are some features here that could help that are very unique to logic. So let's keep going. Now we've defined that this is for MIDI and we can create and edit MIDI. We have defined that visually what is reflected back to us are vertical beams or steps. So here we have the step editor window. This is a window that we can open up, which I'll show you here in a second. And then to the left here, you see the region inspector and then something new for you. If you've been following the series all along, we have the lane inspector. And this is where you perform the most damage with this incredible feature. All right, so let's read a little bit here. Each beam is called a step. So this represents one MIDI event. It's not just a MIDI note, because as you'll find, we can actually do a lot more with it than just input MIDI notes. We can change values such as modulation, resonance, things like that. Okay. Uh, the lane itself represents the the note or the MIDI controller. So like, you know, C sharp or, uh, you know, uh, filter cutoff or whatever. So we have the steps, the lanes, the lane inspector, which allows us to alter and modify the settings of the selected lane, the one that's in key focus. And then finally, the lane set pop up menu. So that we can see at the very top here, which is really just an indicator of what we're looking at. So you can save groups of lanes, several lanes that you have defined as lane sets. All right, and this is gonna expedite your workflow. You access these from the lane set pop-up menu. All right, so let's keep it going. How do we open the step editor? Well, we wanna go into window, open step editor. If you have that set to a key command, that will also work for you. Let me go ahead and fix my screen here. All right, let's bring you guys in so we can actually see how we open this incredible feature. If you have any questions, any comments, you'd love to see more content, go ahead and sub. And um, if you just wanna, you know, you're interested in what we're doing here as a whole, right? There's, there's a whole operation behind me. Uh, go ahead and uh, message support at hfmusicacademy.com uh, just to get more information. Okay, so let's get into it here. We're going to share. All right, so we should be looking at the user guide, page 473. We're getting up there, guys. Um, and so once we open the step editor window, then we're, we're going to uh, kind of look at the most important part of the program, or, or at least the step editor, which is the grid value and understanding how that plays. But um, again, you want to go to window and you want to open up the step editor. Now, notice that it is not available. It's dimmed out. Why is that? Well, that's because I haven't selected any MIDI. So I've prepared track number 11 right here. This thing here is a MIDI region. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is double click it. All right, so we can see everything. So now it's in key focus. And so I will make my way back to the menu bar, go to window, and then we can open up the editor. Again, you can set that to a key command, but look, we have some new visual information here. Looks rather interesting, doesn't it? 
just want to make sure you're looking at what I'm looking at. Sweet. Okay. So this is where all the magic happens. Uh, when I play back this drum part, we're actually listening to all of this stuff. So let me go ahead and let me do that. I'll bring this forward. Okay. So let's look at this. Uh, I will press play. Okay. All right. Let me bypass a couple plugins. It seems like things are going nuts over here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's see if that helps at all. Okay, cool. Okay, so at the most basic level, here is the window where we input the MIDI notes. Again, there's more to add, and we will do that here, but uh, we'll do it in a second. We also have the lane inspector, right? So if I'm highlighting, let's say C sharp zero, which is the, the uh, side stick that you're hearing. Okay, cool. That lets me know here's all the information. If we want to make changes, we can. But before we do, how do we even input the data? Well, fairly simple. We have our cursor tools at the very top. Happens to be that the pencil tool is the command click tool. So I'm going to hold command. And then I will just draw in a value. Okay. Now, what's cool about this is I can just drag up and down to determine the velocity. The very topmost would be 127 all the way down to 1 or 0. All right, so let's play this out. Good. If I wanted to erase it, I can't just hit the pencil tool because all that will do is change the velocity. What we'll do is we hit T and we select the eraser tool and we just erase like that. Okay. Uh, I believe there are some other ways of doing it as well, such as cutting. And we will get into that a little bit later. So let's go back into the user guide and look at the grid parameter here. This can be found in the lane inspector, and this is especially important as soon as you start creating what they call the event steps, okay? When you create new events, they're automatically added at a grid position, and this is set by the grid parameter. So there is the third most important thing to understand. So we're using MIDI, okay? But this is all set to a grid. This happens automatically as soon as you assign a value so we're talking about the grid value here so this makes it easy to create a drum pattern with four divisions on one lane eight divisions on another such as the hi-hats or something and then 16 divisions on let's say a tambourine right assigned to a kick snare and hi-hat okay you get the point so let's say um here on this track i assigned uh, a value of quarter notes and then this one grid value of eighth notes this will do 16 this will do 16 as well and then these up here i'll do 32 or even 64 start with 32 okay so look at the grid itself right it looks very different now there's still some more info to look at but again, how we draw the information in at this point is by holding command and utilizing the secondary click tool. Of course, you can also assign it as the primary, but you know, there's no one way to do it. Just want you to be clear on how to do it so that you can do it the way you do it. Um, all right, so we know how to set the grid value per lane. And I guess I should make one thing clear. The lane is here, right, horizontally. Here's D2, stay in your lane. Here's B0, stay in your lane. Here's C1. And all of this can be modified and changed, uh, and we'll do that later. So the steps that you add are going to snap automatically, as I mentioned, depending on the grid position. The positions of existing steps will not be affected. Okay. When editing or constructing complex patterns, it can be useful to create several lanes. So they're kind of giving you a heads up. If you're going to do some real wild stuff, you might want to 
extend the reach of this function. For one drum note, each with a different quantization grid. So you can have the hi-hats, say, with a grid division of 16th notes, just to kind of have the standard stuff. And then, and, and maybe we'll do this here if I, uh, if I remember. And then you'll have another one playing out a grid of, you know, 196 notes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You can use the pencil tool to add individual hits in the coarser grid and drum rolls in the finer grid. All right, so the idea being that we have individual hits in the kind of more open grids or, or you know, the, the easier ones, and then the ones that are much more detailed, like 196, that's when you would perform some magic there, okay? You can change the appearance of event steps to make event creation and editing easier. Okay, um, would love to know how to change the appearance. I wonder if you could just literally... Um, using the color, nothing is happening. Okay, so we will get more information of that, I am sure. So these gray, just to be clear, these gray ones are all dimmed. Um, uh, and be, that's because they're muted inside of this region right here. Okay, you see how all this is muted? Okay, so I don't have to entirely depend on this menu, right? We're, we're used to it. And if you utilize the brush tool, you get similar sensibilities, similar workflows, but really this is a standalone feature and should be treated as such. So this is good. Let's figure out how to input data. Um, and actually, wait, let me, um, let me show you the hi-hat thing that I was referring to. Uh, let me see, I guess, are these the hi-hats? C1, let me listen to this part. Okay. okay, so as of now, I don't see uh, a hi-hat piece yet. Just search around for something here. Probably easier to create a no control click and then start looking around. Okay. Just looking for an easy hi-hat sound here. Okay, that's okay for now. All right, so then that is a value. I'm gonna hold control and option. That says G sharp negative one. So that's an indication of where we should be. So again, if I'm inside of the step editor, G sharp negative one is here. And now we can create multiple uh, of these and just change the grid value. For example, this one, we will change to G sharp negative one inside of here. So G sharp, um, hold on, I think it's the other way around. G sharp negative one right there. Okay, so you can see that it's reflected, but uh, we're not trying to mirror it, we're trying to change it. So this is a value of 32nd notes, and here I'll change this to, um, let's do 16th. So then when I create this pattern using the pencil tool, um, we'll create the normal stuff down here, if you will. And then when you wanna create a fill, that's when you would use this one on top, right? We're, we're, we're just trying to create something different here. All right, so let's listen to the 16th note value going into the 32nd value. You ready? Here we go. So does that make sense? I was able to create 16th note values here. And of course, it's being mirrored up here because it's the same note. But when we went into G sharp one, we started changing up the pattern. Now, right now, the length looks kind of weird, like it's hard to determine what is what. What I would recommend is that you change the pen width, and that right there uh, plays into sustain. Now, because this is a sample, sustain is just not a, simply a factor. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the value here and check this out. Now, I can see this a lot better, right? I have better say over what this is and how it goes. Uh, I don't want to change the grid. I want to change the width. 
All right, so, so because this is a sample, we're not hearing um, how it's being affected. Now, again, if you wanted to erase something, TE brings up the eraser, and you can erase like so. TT brings me back to the primary cursor tool. Let's go. Good. So then that's one way to do it, right? You can create a bunch of lanes if you wanted to. Let's discover more. What else can we do here? We can set the width as stated by utilizing the pen width pop-up menu. Now they call it a pop-up menu because as soon as I click on this up and down arrow menu, what happens but pop, right? Something pops up allowing us to uh, create some changes. Now, if you had a synthesizer or a chord or what have you, that would be reflected, but because we're just using a sample, you're not gonna hear anything. It's just gonna sound exactly the same. Cool, Fa uh, 474 inside of the logic user guide. Now, once we do set that pen with parameter, um, there's a feature called note length as well. Now, what's interesting about this is that the node event steps are displayed as their actual length. The status parameter must be set to note for this to work. So here, let's see if we can. I'm not sure if this is going to apply to us, but if you decide to change the width to note length, you see how long the note actually is. Now, I'm not sure if this is determined by the length here. No, it doesn't look like it. Maybe I'll try changing that one more time. Let me see here, note length. It looks exactly the same. Uh, one more thing that we'll look at is inside of here. Um, yeah, so what it's doing, I believe, is showing you the length as described here. I'm pretty sure both of these windows are affecting one another and uh, you know if i make changes over there it's going to be reflected here for example if i um well obviously erase the notes they won't be there anymore but if i change the value of the velocity so you know how i can control the velocity of all these let's make them really quiet by holding command and just dragging horizontally across so we're not getting rid of them we're just lowering the velocity All right, let's go back to the main screen. Of course, what you'll find is all of that has been reduced to a bloody pulp. All right, let's command Z that. All right, I think you're getting a better sense of how this works. Again, the best way to use this program to your advantage is to literally go in there and start to practice, right? So we just talked about the note length. Get in there, create a couple notes, right? This is for MIDI and then you would play with the note length. It all just depends on how you want to do it. All right, so we, if we want to change the style, we can go to the style pop-up menu, and we have two options. So it says here, do you want to change, um, uh, like essentially how, what it looks like. So see how it says style up here, so no frames. I actually like the framed values because I can see perfectly how they are defined. I'll do the same for this lane as well, right inside of the lane inspector. And so I'll go to style, framed values, and we are good to go here. So all of this is working, we're good to go. Um, what else do we need to really make this crank? Um, the value event display is a color beam. Yeah, that's all easy. I love it. Okay, the step editor provides several unique methods, right? Then just say one, several for creating and editing MIDI. Not just note on and off information, by the way. We're talking all MIDI CC. In some situations, man manual entry of MIDI notes and controller events is more efficient than performing and recording them. This is why you have showed up today. This is why you are here. This is why you are sharpening your sword. And this is why you will finish watching this entire series. Because when you discover that one technique, it allows you to be more efficient with your skill set. Rather than having to perform it in and record it in a different way, now you have your way, right? Which is unique to you, which allows you to move forward in a clear fashion. That's what we're looking for. Clarity every day. One example would be the creation of 16th notes. 
in a region when the tempo is 180, which would be very difficult to play. So yeah, what they're saying here, I have a metronome right here. So here, check this out. Let me raise up. Uh, this is happening off camera. Hold on. Let me bring you guys in. Boom. All right. So look, I have a metronome, right? So if I bring this all the way up, uh, hold on, not like that. If I bring it all the way up to 180, okay. So if you try playing 16th notes at this rate, One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a, that would be challenging for for most people, especially if they're not beat makers by trade, right? That's not what they do. So they'd have to get on their controller, you know, play it really quickly. So this window affords you the opportunity to be able to effectively input the MIDI data, not just notes, but all MIDI data, and it allows you the opportunity to do it in an easy way. And isn't that what we're after, right? Isn't that what we're after to make this whole thing fluid, right? And just so you can dance and move with it. That's the whole name of the game. This is why we're watching. This is why we're doing this because it helps make it easier. And when we make it easy, then we can start to experience mastery, right? And then the easier it gets, the further you go, the further you go, the harder it gets. And we keep playing this uh, game of cat and mouse until you get to wherever it is you want to get to. Uh, let's keep it going here. Eddie Gray reading the Logic User Guide, page 474, recovering the step editor. So everything's looking good, right? We're much clearer about what this is, why we would use it. It says that we can record events with a MIDI keyboard. And then, of course, we can refine our performance. So maybe you can't play in those 16th notes, but you can rock eighth notes. So in the case of 180, it would be one and two and three, as opposed to one E and a two E and a, so now you have one and two and. So it's a little bit easier to be able to play the eighth notes and then refine inside of the step editor. So we've mentioned how to add a step with the pencil tool. We uh, have grazed over multiple steps, but essentially you use the pencil tool and you drag horizontally across over the time position on the appropriate lanes. So this is going to be freehand. It's not going to be perfect, just to be clear, uh, both vertical and horizontal. Um, so let's just do that really quick. Uh, let's see, maybe for, let's uh, change the value here. And why don't I erase all these? So we'll go E. Erase all this good stuff. Uh, of course, if we don't want to hear the information, we could just hit MIDI out up here. And so then now the pencil tool is back in effect. I'm changing the grid value to 64th notes. And I'm just going to drag, and not just to the right, but up and down to affect velocity. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. And I should change that as well because it kind of looked like it was just regular 16th notes, but that's because I had uh, the note value on, uh, or was that uh, here on pen width. So it's a lot easier to see what you're actually doing. Now remember, these are not actually playing back. They're just mirroring what's happening here. Take a listen. So that's at a rate of, uh, what was that, 64th notes. So let's do something just much more easy to understand 16th notes so i changed the grid but the notes haven't changed because they've already been input so the grid has changed behind it so let's go ahead and erase these easy all right let's open up the pencil tool and then now we'll select 16th notes now their width isn't very large because we determined that with pen width and we're not hearing it because this is a sample if this was a synth or something it would sound longer, right? It would sustain out. But let's listen to this hi-hat idea. All right, good. So you see how easy that is? Just literally just drawing it out, not really thinking about it. 16th notes. I could find a better sound, but anyway, you get the point. Here we go. Okay, so all that makes sense. What is this? Yeah, even, even a fill like that. See how cool that fill sounds without necessarily even trying? So this is a great creative space as well. 
All right. So what else we got? Um, all right. If we want to edit multiple steps. So once we have designated the, the, the steps here, let me just do, let me see. What does this look like? and sound like, um, yeah. So let's pretend I just did this whole thing. Okay. And now I want to really edit this and, and make it work, but you could see it's like, wow, that's kind of overwhelming. It's a lot of notes there. So the way to do this, my good friends, is by going back into the cursor tools and by selecting the line tool, all right? And this line tool that we're currently looking at right now really is money, right? It really help you stabilize performance. For example, if you wanted something all the way across, I don't know, 75, 74, I'm trying to balance this out, 76, I drew a line. It could, it could be horizontal, it could be diagonal. And then check this out, everything follows suit. So now everything is in the pocket with velocity. Maybe we play this back, ah, it's too loud, I actually want a crescendo. I believe this is the most effective way of creating a crescendo in Logic Pro, right? Very clean workflow. Now, if you wanted to humanize this, you could, but here, check this out. Hold on, playback uh, here. So this is a good example of how we can refine a performance. So then now T E. And so what I'll do is every time that snare hits, I'll erase just one of the steps, not that one, but this one here. Yeah. So that it's not conflicting with the performance and maybe I'll just take them out here. All right, let's listen to this again. Let me take out some more plugins. This thing's going nuts. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so I think that clarifies that. If you're going to change values and you want to do it efficiently with a bit more certainty, because, you know, if we use the pencil tool, that is freehand. So if you need something with a bit more rigidity, do me a favor and go ahead and use the line tool. That will get you there. All right, so now we know how to edit multiple steps. We, uh, we want to create or alter a linear series of steps in selection. That's basically the equivalent of creating a crescendo. Um, so really quick, it says here, you can use the line tool to alter values for all MIDI events in the step editor, but you cannot use it to create MIDI note events. Which makes sense if you think about it because um, we're just playing with velocity. You can't actually create notes. If you want to create notes, you're going to have to utilize the pencil tool to get you there, right? So here I'm drawing note values, whereas up here, uh, you could draw it in as well, but, but this is velocity, right? This has nothing to do with the actual note placement. So line tool is for MIDI. CC. Um, let's see, another line is immediately drawn from everything's pretty much the same. Yes. Values of existing events if the area between the line starts and are aligned. Yeah, so basically everything lines up. It's easy to create a decrescendo or a crescendo or just an even velocity curve as well, or line, should I say. If you want to assign a fixed stepped value, you can also do this. So you can assign a fixed value when creating event steps. When enabled, the fix value item in the lane set pop-up menu prevents any event value from being altered. All right, this is important because obviously once you lock in a performance, you don't want anything to change that. And so this gives you that extra added security. So this is ideal when you add steps with the pencil tool. They're all assigned to the value that you previously selected. And then this allows you to draw a succession or a group of events with the same value. So it's gonna help us create some more stability within this great feature. Nice to have uh, both the humanizing effect and then just some fixed robotic data, right? Some binary zeros and ones. Um, so when we choose fix value, 
from the lane set pop-up menu now this is where we get into this so go here okay and we're gonna look at the lane inspector here so it says um let's see in logic pro choose fix value from the lane set pop-up menu so we're here lane set we're going to fix value okay what has happened i just want to know what happens after that when you click any existing event with the pencil tool to use its value as a preset oh okay so let's say right now um i want everything to be at the highest value depending on which note you click that's going to be the preset so i'll click on the one to the far right so i'm going to wait hold on let me move my mouse okay i'm going to click it once okay i think it has now defined a value we're about to find out yes so yeah regardless of me uh moving my mouse and hovering up and scrolling down nothing is changing the velocity value is the same because we determined in the lane set that we wanted to create a fixed value you can also take that feature out if you want a little bit more flexibility it obviously game changer right if you really think about it um so let me go ahead and highlight this some good stuff i will take it when adding events with the line tool the preset value is always used as the starting value of the line so um i think i took out the value so let's put that back in oh no it's on there so they're saying hey when you do use the line tool uh got some changes coming up you can't do uh anything but what you know we we tell you to so the, that's where it begins um it looks like it will change the behavior but it always starts at the very top of the uh, previous value. So in that case, I believe it's 127 or pretty close. And then you can see that I'm trying to draw, but it always starts at the very top. Cool. All right. Uh, I think that's important too. If, if I hadn't read that and I would look at the behavior, I would definitely think that there wasn't something, there, there was something wrong, right? A couple screws loose there. All right, let's keep going. Select steps in the step editor in Logic Pro. If you press and hold shift, then you don't necessarily have to be creating anything. You could just be selecting, right? If you hold command, now we are individually selecting. Holding shift changes that behavior. As soon as I go back to just command, it will reset the entire group. Let's see, if you want to select all the steps, just like in the tracks area, you want to go ahead and click the track. Why are these two highlighted? Well, they're the same exact note, as you can tell right here. And why did we do this? You're going to have to watch a little bit earlier to remember uh, how we, we, we got here. But essentially, we created the same note with a different grid value. The grid value is up here. Why did we do that? Creatively, it's just it's good practice. If you want to delete steps, a couple ways that we can do that. We can hit delete. We can cut. We can use the eraser tools I've been showing you. You can delete several steps and then non-several steps or non-contiguous um, by using the pointer tool and shift clicking. So if let's say if I wanted to get rid of this one, holding shift, that one, holding shift, that one, then I would hit delete and we're all good to go. Of course, we could also just change the value holding command and uh, wait, are we still at fixed value? I believe we are. So we're going to have to change that in order to change these values. That makes sense? All right. Let's uh, keep going. It says here, hey, do you want to delete similar or equal steps? If we hit Shift S, the, all the lessons keep repeating themselves, don't they? Right. We find all this behavior inside of the piano roll as well right we're gonna hit shift s or shift e and then we will delete any notes that are similar so here is a uh, hold on i guess i'll select just one and i'll hit shift s it looks like they're all the same why don't i hit shift e uh, and i don't see anything that's related to that but shift s is going to select all of the g sharps it looks like so that's not really going to help us in this regard but that's there if you need it right selecting similar regions and then muting or deleting or what have you 
You can also delete events by choosing one of the delete MIDI event commands from the step editor menu bar. So you can also delete events by choosing delete MIDI events in the step editor menu bar. So step editor menu bar. I don't even know where that is. They didn't mention anything about it. So I guess here, select all lanes, delete lane set, delete lanes. I'm not sure if they're referring to this, but yeah, we need some, we need some graphics. That would be nice. Um, uh, and then just a little bit more info, uh, really command step editor menu bar. Yeah. So it says step editor menu bar. Okay, cool. Well, where's that? I don't see anything that says step editor. I see lane set lane. Okay. We, uh, we have to keep going. I'm going to strike it, but I don't think it deserves a strike. I just don't have enough info here. Let's go 479 Eddie Gray reading the logic user guide brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com. Restore deleted steps in the step editor. Okay, so uh, once you've deleted, maybe accidentally, you can undo, right? Command Z, we know that. It says here that you can backtrack your edits easily in Logic Pro. How that is determined? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you go into, uh, let me see if I can find this for you. There is a place, there is a place. I just need to think about this clearly. Mm. Am I going to find it right now? Uh, it keeps track of your undo. Yes. Let's go. That's what happens when you are doing what you got to do, right? When you guys aren't watching me here, when you guys aren't looking at me, you know what I'm doing. I, I continue on this voyage to be the very best in Logic Pro today. And I claim it because I know it because it's true. So if you want to change the number of undo steps, oops, let me bring that back. Uh, come on, preferences. All right, right here, uh, let me highlight it inside of preferences, editing, number of undo steps. So it doesn't have to be 100, by the way. I mean, it can be. I'm sure that affects your CPU to some degree. But yeah, general editing, the number of undo steps. Let's go. All right, um, very cool. Happy with uh, everything. It's all registering, making sense. If you were here for yesterday's session, it was intense. It was like, wow, do I really want to learn this? And regardless if you feel like it or not, the commitment stays the same. The feeling does not matter. The discipline and the commitment does. This is why we are back. This is why we are sharpening our sword. This is why we have shown up and are going to continue to show up for six days a week until we complete this. Let's go. All right. So uh, we know that we can redo by hitting shift command Z. All of this is uh, all textbook, right? Um, in fact, we can go into the uh, undo history window, which is really cool and again, often overlooked. And we can start to apply or redo edit operations. And then it says, if you just change your mind, you can click cancel. I'll show you it in one second. It says, when the operation is applied, an isolated edit is undone or redone without influencing all edit uh, operations between the clicked and highlighted. So this is really powerful. I can't believe they just brushed it off as the side kind of, oh, hey, by the way, uh, you know, if you do this, they can completely change and alter the course of your session. You might want to take a quick second. This is why we're doing this, right? We don't rehearse these guys for this very reason. Notice we haven't been rushing, right? We've been giving you the information in the cleanest and clearest way possible. All right. So what they're saying here is like, let's say I create a bunch of uh, stuff right now. We're just going to do it randomly. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. All right. So then when I go into edit, and that can also be replicated here. Undo history, right? Option command Z. We get this dialog window. Now, what's really interesting here is that we can tell Logic, hey, I like everything that I've done, but I would like to redo this, right? It's, it, it's giving you an opportunity to recreate or undo a certain feature in your session. So I'm going to command click, let's say that one. And so then now we're back to that, to that part of the session. Now, what's interesting is 
you can bypass uh, the decisions you've made inside of the mixer and bypass decisions you've made inside of plugins. So that's really interesting. So let's see what this looks like, right? See how I created these notes a second ago, right? I can take them out, right? Take the ones on top out. I could bring them all back in, right? But uh, it did say that we can isolate events. So I'm curious on how we can, we can isolate like just one thing. So let's see if we can uh, read up. Let me see, redo, 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 redo. So it looks more chronological and it doesn't give us any more info. So it says, uh, is undone or redone without influence all at, yeah. So not sure what else is there in terms, you know, what else we can say. Um, but regardless, it's still a really cool feature in, in the regard that we can undo specific steps and we can see them visually right here. I have, what is it? A hundred and something undo steps. Pretty incredible. Um, but we can also regard the mixer and the plugins themselves. And if you don't know how to turn that on, I suggest you go into any plugin in Logic. Okay. Click on the user preset menu up here. And then say include plugin undo steps and project undo history. So that gets you a little bit closer there. And then there's also a way to get the mixer in there. I am not sure if I remember how to do it right now. Um, but there is certainly a way. Maybe maybe it just happens by itself. Maybe I uh, I misspoke. Yeah, I'm pretty sure maybe that, that just happens by itself. Um, okay. So let's keep going. Um, but yeah, that is something that we should question. I don't want to strike it because it's not wrong. But I'll tell you what. Let's put some, uh, let's put some question marks up in here. So what I'm going to do is I'll draw in, uh, hold on, let's do some text and we're just going to do a bunch of question marks. Oh, that's not it. That's it. All right, good. All right, guys. Yeah, we're, we're voting in Mr. Edgar Rothermick to create the new logic user guide. We're going to yell it out, be proud about it, right? Put it up on social, uh, comment on his uh, YouTube, on all his socials, buy his books. He's got incredible books, Mr. Edgar Rothermick. And w when he rewrites this, I mean, we are all going to be better for it. So go ahead, hashtag Edgar Rothermick Logic Pro User Guide, something like that. Um, all right, let's keep going. Changing the step values. Well, we already did that. Why are we doing it again? We can do it with a pointer and a pencil tool. Okay, why do we keep doing it? Oh, oh I guess there is something to be said. If we click and drag, the help tag does come out and uh, gives us a little bit of assistance. If we want to alter several steps, you want to drag across with the pointer and then go up and down. Drag across the steps and uh, you can affect the value of each step. So let me check on that because that doesn't seem right. So if I draw here, for example, you're only affecting one step. Sure, you're creating a bunch of them by moving left and right, but it's not exactly clear about that. Drag across the steps. Vertical movements affect the value of each step. Right, but that's not all the steps. I guess if I click and drag, and then I use the pointer tool, yeah, okay. So that's different than what they just said. That should uh, that needs to be changed a little bit. Um, strike through. Alter the values of, wait, did we just get that one? Uh, select the value you want to grab one on the group, the highlight steps, then drag vertically. Wait a minute, that is what they just said. Okay, all right, so then I read it too quickly. That's good. That is good. Move and copy steps in the step editor in Logic Pro. The steps can be moved. They can be copied to other positions in the same or other lanes. We can copy them between lanes. The event values are going to be retained but they're going to be converted to the new event type. So we can move C to D or, you know, E to G or what have you. Moving several steps from the volume lane into pan lane results in the volume lane step values being used for pan position changes. So let's see how this works exactly. We want to use the finger tool to drag the selected step to the new position. So uh, let me command Z this. This has been 
Yeah. Let's listen to the idea again just to get uh, reoriented. Okay, so I'll take the hi-hats per se. We'll hit T. We'll utilize the finger tool. I should set that to, as a key command to F. But uh, then we'll click and we'll drag. Let's see. Does it just, ha do we just click and drag on this guy? How come, uh, okay. So it didn't, uh, hold on, move, copy, retain. Use the finger tool to drag the select steps to the new position and lane as you drag. Okay. So again, I'll select, let's just go with these really quick. I'll drag down. Oh, oh okay. So yeah, selecting all these hi-hats. I hover over one of, yeah, so that, that, that's where the disconnect was. You have to hover the hand or the finger tool over one of the beams, click, hold, and then drag down, and that will get you there. So let's listen to this really quick. Let's drag this down to, ooh, look at that. You can drag them over to the left and right. That's pretty sweet. Let's move this over to the left for fun. And then let's drag it down. Let's see what this sounds like. That's a solid, solid idea. It's exactly what I'm talking about because you would not have been able to create that in another editor. This is why it's special. This is why you're taking the time. This is why you're taking notes. This is why you're doing the work. All right. So what else we got? Um... In fact, I want to highlight that. I didn't know you could do that. Pretty sweet. Uh, let's see. Move steps with key commands. All right. So we have key commands that we can actually utilize to move these around. Pretty crazy. How do you change key commands? Right in here. If you wanted to move something over, you hit the appropriate key command, and it will nudge by milliseconds, by your nudge value, by sample, all that good stuff. Let's keep going. Copy the selected steps. So you can option shift and drag the selected steps to the new position and lane. Let's say I want just this one. Shift, option, drag up. Cool. Now, what's interesting is, does the finger tool have to be um, selected? I don't know. I'm going to hold them now. Let's see. Ah, nice. I dig it. Very cool. So you, I didn't have to access the finger tool or the hand tool. So let me go ahead and write that down because it didn't even tell you to do that. Um, like, you know, that's one thing is like, I would just like a little clarity in regards to that because we're reading about the finger tool. And so there's a supp supposition that like we have to use it in order to move it. And so those little things would make a big difference. I think as you drag a help tag displays. Yes. Roger that as you drag, let me see. Is that true? As I drag, is something happening? I don't see it, but hold on. Maybe I missed it. Yeah, there's the help tag right there. It's saying, hey, do you want to go to C1, G1? Yeah, I see you. Okay, let's, um, let's keep rolling here. Uh, we want to copy. We can do the copy C, copy V thing. We can do uh, you know, cutting. Uh, that's all easy stuff. I'm not going to cover that. That's all stuff that you've seen. Uh, wait, wait, what is protect position? Now we're talking because obviously... This could be a fairly volatile environment, especially when you're a beginner. Um, so how do we protect the position of the steps? There are times when you want to protect certain steps from being moved. Here, let me, let me see you guys real quick. Boom. Ah, how's it going? Eddie Gray reading the logic user guide. We're going over the step editor. I'm sure you don't even know what it is. So stay tuned. Let's go. For example... Several node events may be used to trigger footstep samples that match an actor walking. We've actually talked about this. Do you guys remember SIMPTY? This is a way for us to be able to change the time of a track without necessarily affecting the position of what it is that you're working with. Now, this applies mostly to, it seems like, um, folly, sound effects, things like that. So uh, this may not be the best thing to practice with if you're a producer, strictly a producer. But still, you should know about it. I actually use this just to lock tracks so that I don't mess anything up. Um, really useful feature. 
So all you really got to do, honestly, is just go to functions and then lock everything and that's it. So uh, at the most basic level, I click on D2, I go to functions and I lock it. Uh, I don't see anything visually different, but let's say I try to, um, I don't know, uh, can I eradicate one? Like if, I actually think you could delete, yeah, you could delete it. Um, the difference is, for example, if I like, if I lock this right here, full, wait, where is it? Simply lock. If I try and move it, it goes back to its position. Um, see how I'm trying to move this? It's interesting as I can drag it up or down, but in terms of the time left to right, it's not budging at all. Let's unlock this. So we go to Simpty, unlock, good. All right, let's go back to that. Sweet. All right, that's pretty easy. I wonder, yeah, I was gonna say, I wonder why they repeat some of these ideas, but so there's so much to this program, it doesn't, doesn't surprise me. Um, all right. So the lane parameters, right? We, we've mostly been talking about note, but now it looks like we're going to get into various lanes to, to determine the event type, right? Uh, CC 14 or sustain or whatever. Events are shown as vertical beams, AKA steps aligned with a particular time position in the ruler. All right, so we know that these are all perfectly on the grid as determined by the grid value and the note length. You can use the lane parameter to change the way that the beams are displayed. We already talked about, you know, giving them some fashion sensibilities using the lane inspector, the lane parameter menu. You can also alter the grid resolution. Okay, good. All this has been covered. Yes, keep reiterating logic user guide you can select the lane and its parameters by clicking the lane name with the pointer or the pencil tool so if we click on a lane we can uh start to do some damage right select all the notes you can change the lane parameters in the inspector the lane inspector so if i wanted to change something about this perhaps uh to make it off the grid a little bit play with the delay uh, again, you can play with the style here and frame everything. Let's say I wanted everything to be shorter or even longer. Let's just go longer. Um, although you're not going to hear it here, but um, I wonder if I play with ticks, if you'll hear it. Uh, here, let me isolate this. Good. Now we're not hearing it at all. What's up? Why? Uh, hmm. Not sure. Let me listen to the whole thing. Oh, okay. Pretty sure I just have to share. Hold on real quick. Aha. I see what's going on. All right. Let's bring you guys in. Uh, Eddie Gray covering the logic user guide. Let's go in here a little bit. So um, we've covered a lot already. This is certainly not as challenging as yesterday, but there are just a lot of little details, right? Um, so here is the lane inspector. Uh, this is where we can determine what we affect. So this is what we're going to get into now. Okay. Um, let's see. Create a new lane. So we're going to choose lanes, create lane. We can also hit option command N, and that just creates a new lane. Now, I don't want a replicate of this one. I want to determine, I want something new here. So where it says, um, not lane set, where's the, uh, the status? We're gonna change this to something else. All right, so let's keep going with the, and by the way, you could have also hit uh, lane, create lane. So you don't just have to hit that key command. We have more options here in the lanes menu. So we created a new lane. Uh, we've adjusted all the parameters in the inspector. We, if we wanna create more, we can do that as well. Um, it says in logic pro, if you choose auto define that something else happens. So what exactly? I don't know. So where is auto define? I don't see it. I, I did see that terminology somewhere. Was it here? No, I don't remember. Yeah, here it is. Auto. Def oh, right. Did they say lane set menu? Yeah. 
So what happens here when I create a new track, does it automatically just assign MIDI CC? I don't know. Um, we're not getting enough, enough info here. So it says if we choose this, it's going to automatically create lane specific for specific event types. So I guess logic does some thinking for you. If you then open the event list window, then click the event you want to create. The clicked events are added as lanes in the lane set. All right. If I open the event list window, okay, let's try that out. Go here, event list. So we have auto define on, this is getting kind of technical now. And I don't know, we want to affect uh, the velocity. Uh, no, no, let's do length, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I'm not seeing what they're talking about. Uh, create a new lane. Mm. Yeah. Not sure exactly what they are referring to. Create multiple lanes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, we're back here. Um, let me just make sure I'm selecting the right region. Yes, okay. So that got a little bit kind of weird there. I do much prefer just clean workflows with no questions asked. Like right there, just like, why did we do that? What was the point of that? Right. I really like it when they tell us the, the why behind it. Right. Now, of course, it says to automatically create lanes for specific event types. It's like, okay, well, what does that mean? Why would I want to do that? Right. So anyway, let's keep going. Let's find the good stuff here. Let's find the good stuff. The lane set already contains a matching lane type. Logic Pro does not create a superfluous. That's not true because it just literally did that. <laughs> just, I mean, I mean, look, it should be stated that this feature, I believe, is not really being given a lot of TLC. Um, so, yeah, I have auto define on. And uh, wait, wait, auto define was inside of the lane set. Okay, auto define, sweet. Okay, and then I create a new lane. And it says it doesn't create the same value, but it's right there. So, what's up? Um, yeah, that that is that is a ding right there because it's it should be just one plus one. But, I mean, really, like if I was a beginner doing this, wow, this would be this would be like uh, Mount Everest in a lot of ways, you know, without the proper training. Um, okay, so we can create multiple lanes now. When you do that, it says, "Hey, click the All button to confirm that you want to create lanes for all the types or events in the region." Okay. Uh, actually, let's read the tip. It's a good idea to create a new lane set before creating a group of new lanes. It's a good idea to create a new lane set. Okay, let's create a new lane set. Uh, so I'll do edit, create new lane set. And then I'm going to create multiple lanes. And I will say all, oh, please. Okay, now this is pretty sweet. Now I understand the, the value here. I'm going to highlight that. I really like that. So you just pulled up some drums and you want to get a better read of everything that you're using inside of your MIDI region so you can input the data a little bit better. This is a nice feature here. Kind of clears up the screen as well. So then let's say you're like, yeah, uh, I want to affect volume. You can affect it here as a whole, right? Uh, let me undo that. But then again, if you wanted to duplicate this, uh, let's say if we hit Command C, Command V. Nope, not like that. Although that was an interesting feature. I'm going to hold Option. Can I create another one of these? Yeah, right below. So we've duplicated, and I'll change the grid value from 16th note to 32nd. I'll change the pen width over to one, and then now I can create some interesting fills here. Let's see if we can pull this off. Uh, we'll do some right here, and then finally we'll do some right here, and then uh, maybe at the end. All right, let's check it out. You can see how gnarly this is when it comes to drums. I mean, this is gold, as we've mentioned several times. Like just the the idea that you're able to create um, all these really cool textures and and poly rhythms without really giving it much thought. It's a lot easier to do it here than it is inside of the MIDI region. Now, some of you noobs 
may argue, hey, why don't we just use the pattern format? I agree with you. I think it's equally as awesome. But it's still worth mentioning that, that there's still potentially some room here for this tool. Now, I'll admit, I use the pattern format more than this, but I'm always in the inquiry of what else I can do and how else I can develop. And so this is why we're taking a look at this. All right. So we showed you how to clear your lane sets, how to create multiple lanes. All of this is happening automatically thanks to the amazing engineering going on over at Logic or Apple. So that's awesome. And so then what we're going to do now is we're going to click the name of the lane we want to copy, right? And then we're going to copy the lane. Um, and it says here, copy a set of lane parameters between two lane sets. Hmm. Really interesting. Why are they showing this? <laughs> oh man, sometimes that's conf this is, Am I wrong? Does this look like a mistake? Switch the destination lane set by choosing the lane set menu. Top of the inspector. Hmm. By choosing the lane set name. I'm not sure. And why are they highlighting GM drum kit? There's, there's no uh, message or about that. Yeah, this looks a little strange. Uh, it's got to get clear. What happens if I, oh yeah, okay. So now they're getting into this whole GM uh, drum kit standard. I believe this was a standard developed uh, a while back. And um, it shows you essentially everything that's, that's mapped to your drum kit. Uh, if it follows the protocol, by the way, because like if I load up, I think contact or something, it's not going to look the same. So this is specific to DEWs and, and plug-in companies. So yeah, automatic is working nice for me. Um, not really sure. I guess if you want to copy the lane parameters between, let's say, this group and that group, you can do that. I don't want to do that. Um, we could delete lanes. Uh, choose lanes, delete lanes is pretty easy. What else you got? Okay, this looks like a little bit more. We can rearrange the order. Grab the name of the lane and you can drag it up or down such as you could do in the tracks area. So if you want to really bring D2 all the way down, you can bring it down. It doesn't affect any routing or anything like that. Um, if you want to redefine a lane along with all the events, the values of the events are retained, but the event type is changed. So convert all events on a lane to another type of event. That's pretty wild. All right, so then what we'll do is, uh, let's see, we'll take, what is D2? Is this a hi-hat or something? Oh, we're going to convert this to something else. We're going to go lane, convert lane. Boom. We get this window. I feel like this window hasn't been opened up by anybody except you and I. Like, quite honestly, this is amazing. All right, so then we could say, hey, we want the pen width to be one. Uh, rather than 30 second, actually we'll keep 30 second, but we'll change the note value to not D2, but let's do what Should we do D3. See what that sounds like. All right. And then, yeah, sure. Let's quantize everything. Convert. Let's see what this sounds like. That sounds awesome. That sounds really, really cool. What an interesting mistake. Happy accidents, y'all. Happy Wednesday, Eddie Gray reading the Logic User Guide 484. If you can believe that, what a journey. And if you are on Mount Everest with me and you're doing this climb with me, I salute you. I take my hat off to you. You are a warrior, right? You are one of a kind, and this is why you will succeed. Keep pushing, my brother. Keep pushing, my sister. Let's go. You can see parameters of the selected lane. We did all this pretty easy stuff. Um, just an easy way for you to change data in a heartbeat. Use the lane inspector. Well, it's just like the region inspector, right? Pretty basic stuff. See if there's anything interesting. I'm seeing a new phrase that we've never read before. First data byte. So that's where my attention is turned. The most important parameters are status and first data byte. All right, so that's see that's what I'm paying attention to because I don't I'm not interested in remembering the five billion words contained in this user guide. 
I'm interested in remembering the finer points that allow you to get to the next level. You know that I'm on a mission to help as many people as I potentially can. That's one of my favorite things about living this life is that we can assist and build each other up. As you may know, I already have a ton of students, clientele, and I work with several corporations to help them with all the stuff we're covering here. And so I want to help you too. All right, let's keep going here. Status parameter sets the event type for the selected lane. The first data byte shown as number in the image sets the value for the chosen event type. So the appearance of the first data byte parameter changes when the different event types are, ch are chosen. Okay, so then we know that the number has something to do with the data. So let's check this out. If we want to name a lane, we can of course double click uh, and uh, use the text entry box to enter a name. I'm not going to show you how to double click. It's a, you guys are, we're at page 485. So by this point, if you don't know how to double click something, you got to go back to the beginning. All right, we've got to go one more time over. All right. So I want to talk about the, oh, is this it? We don't get anything else. Oh man. <laughs> All right. So status, where is, oh, wait, is it? Is it under control? No number. Does that say no? That's its pitch. Status. Where's number? Hmm. What is the difference? How did I get there? I missed that. The most important parameters are status and first data byte. And then it says that it's named something else. What was it? Shown as number. Hmm. So number. Is going on here? Where is it? Not there. Not there. You close a region inspector. So yeah, I don't see this feature. Why not? So it says lane. We see that there, but then it looks like it reads something else. CTR 14. How did they get there? So where is the most important parameters are status. There is status. Okay, note. Control. Okay, here. Boom. Okay. So, if you want to get into this world, you have to change the status into control. All right. And then, the, looks like this is where all the MIDI CC is. <laughs> so, it's not that complicated, but man, just to get there. So, let's say we wanted to affect modulation. Uh, let's do something that we all know that we can hear, not sustain. I want like, oh, can I do brightness? That would be cool. Start with brightness and then maybe affect reverb or something. So um, let's draw in a bunch of stuff. Oh, what happened to my other data that was here? Mm, no bueno. Um, and then I'm going to have to turn on some more information here. Uh, let me just listen to what this is. All right, let's see what this sounds like. Uh, let me start out really dark and then really bright. Let's see what this sounds like. All right, cool. I can hear some of that. Dark. So I wonder if that's affecting the EQ or what this is doing. Um, let me just check here. Yeah, so somehow it's controlling brightness. I think it's within the plugin itself. So if we could find something a little bit uh, more obvious, like, I don't know, let's try decay time maybe. So you no decay and then a lot of decay. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. So yeah, would love a little bit more info on how to control. Is, is this controlling globally, like the whole thing? Uh, what 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 are we doing here? So soft pedal. I wonder if there's like a filter. Oh, let's try reverb. If you don't hear this, then it's probably not happening. Uh, so here's very little reverb and then a lot. Here we go. Yeah. 
yeah, I don't hear it. So I'm just wondering how we connect the dots here and then where it's coming from. Because, again, we're not clear if it's coming from the plugin itself, which I doubt there's not a lot of parameters in here. Um, is it coming from these plugins? Not a lot is being said. Not a lot is being said. Let me check one more time. Yeah, we need more info, certainly. But at least we're getting a sense of where everything is and how to control it. Um, you define a named MIDI controller from a mapped instrument. The relevant name is automatically shown. Changing a note and then, yeah. So if you change the note, it's going to be reflected. Cool. Delay or advance all steps. So that would be done inside of the lane inspector under delay. That's uh, We've gone over this kind of stuff a lot here. You should transmit controller data slightly before or after a note to improve the timing of notes. So yeah, if we could get it to work, that would be fantastic. But we need to hear the change. We could uh, change the length as well. Uh, drag the length parameter vertically. So let's see, I guess here, like if you want to increase. Um, well, we don't see it here per se. Let me see if I could play with it here. Yeah, you're not seeing it here, but if you go into the actual MIDI region, uh, it should be reflected. Is it, You see how all these have been changed? Um, yeah, so you should see it there. Um, but wait, this is brightness. Uh, let's listen to this drum. Uh, so let's affect the length here. Let's make these really long. See, do we see anything different here? Yeah, so the length has been shifted there. All right, let's keep going. We can change the MIDI channel per lane. Uh, for those of you interested in that kind of thing, simultaneously change the parameter of multiple lanes. So if we shift click, create an aggregate, and uh, then we go to lane, select all lanes, and then deselect lanes you don't want to change by shift clicking them. So we can go lanes select all lanes and then if i shift click let's say b0 or wait i guess that would be command click is that right um select all lanes command click yeah they say shift uh yeah they said shift um but yeah we know that they meant command strike that um change the event type so if you don't want to affect your fader or or the meta event you can change the note the midi controller uh lane after touch polyphonic touch uh maybe i need to select another instrument to 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 better reflect this like uh if we select alchemy for example oh wait a minute i already have alchemy up here let me uh let me just get back there i think this is probably just a limitation of these drums but like i have uh this working idea here, check it out. By the way, I, I've been uh, developing this with some new uh, plugs, some new samples that just came out by a company called Yurt Rock. Uh, look how nice these sound. Yeah, if, uh, if you don't play guitar or piano or drums, I just came upon these plugins. They're quite amazing. I'm going to put a link down uh, in the channel. And if you want to check these out, they got some really, really, really nice sounds. Uh, here, I'll just give you a quick example. Like that's the cajon that I use. Here's some guitar stuff. <laughs> The reason I like these is because they sound so realistic. You know, most of the time you hear a lot of this stuff and it just sounds too MIDI, right? It sounds too fake. Listen to those brushes. You can tell that was recorded with some high quality converters. Uh, let's get some guitar stuff going here. <laughs> Yeah, I just took the samples themselves and then just brought it in and started writing some stuff. So we have a really gorgeous sample set by this incredible company. Here are some drums. 
and they've got a ton of other stuff. Here's some uh, toms. Yeah, so that could be a nice fill. Okay, so yeah, check out, check out Yurt Rock when you guys get a chance. Uh, brand new up and coming company. Uh, all right, so we, we've got this idea. It sounds great. I have alchemy right here. No, that's serum. Oh, geez. Is that not alchemy? I thought it was alchemy. Wait. Um, that's the bait. Oh, yeah. Here, here's alchemy. Okay. So it's this uh, singer. Check it out. Okay. So now this is a very simple one note phrase. But again, if I'm utilizing the step editor, which you can see, there's just one note all the way sustained across. But what if I wanted to affect other features? Well, we can do that. We know that we can affect other things. Pitch bend, if we would like to. Uh, let's start with pitch bend and see what that sounds like. Uh, we're going to draw and we'll just do something crazy. Let's see what this sounds like. So it took it right. Pitch bender voice. Check it out. So just be aware that the the zero value is not negative 60, right? You would have to erase this or go to zero to reset it back to its default value. Because um, if you don't do that, it's going to maintain the same note. So like here, I've reset it back to zero, right? Check it out. So it's on the do, 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 right? If you don't change that, like I'm going to delete this now. Look what happened. Stayed at this value, which is negative, what was it again? Like 88 or something? Like 64. So that's no bueno, right? That's not going to work for what we're up to, right? This is MIDI, negative 64, positive 63, plus the zero, that's 128. Okay, so let's set a value back of zero. Oh, in fact, let's erase all this bit. And let's see if we can control something else as we had been trying to do so. Uh, so I'm going to go to control. All right, sweet. And then let's look for what it is we're affecting. Uh, modulation, shall we? Let's try this out. Um, so I guess I'll start low, go really high, and then really low. Let's see what's up. Yeah. All right. It's a winner. So, so this is all happening automatically. I don't know if you really caught the magic of that. So... Uh, if you're going to learn it, let's start with a synthesizer. Um, if you're just inputting notes, I think the drummer thing was fantastic, really easy to learn, right? We create a new lane. Let's say this was a drum, and then you designate the pitch, right? Uh, no, I don't want F2. I want the snare, which is on F sharp. And then you just start drawing in values, all determined by the grid division here, okay? But if we're going to get into... MIDI CC and sustain and, and after touch and all that, then it's probably better to really learn this with uh, another uh, tool, like a synthesizer or something like that, because it's very clear now what this is doing and what it sounds like. Can I get a filter cutoff? Can I get a filter cutoff? Let's go. Um, let me see. I don't see a filter cutoff, but uh, I guess I'll take balance, control nine. I don't even know what some of these do. Um, let's just do pan. All right. So I'm going to hold command. Let's create our own, our very own auto panner. Check this out. Boom. All right. And then I'll just reset at a value of zero. All right. Let's go from the top. So I'm actually not hearing any of that. I'm wondering if it's reflected here. I doubt it, but negative so anyway that's not working i'm sure this is going to happen from time to time where the dots are not being connected what about the volume does it work for volume yeah i still don't hear that one as well well at least we heard modulation so i'm i'm at least happy about that um let's keep going so the first data parameter reflects the chosen status um, again, we can control other stuff as well. So program changes, select the first data checkbox to show the first defined byte. So I guess that would be that one right there. 
Okay. And now you can start selecting whatever it is you want to change. So let's say we made some modulation decisions here. Then you want to play with the breath. Go back to modulation. Everything's still there. Fantastic. Um, chosen when the pitch band data is chosen, the status line is also ignored because both data. Okay, good. So they're just giving you some laws, kind of what occurs there. If you're going to use lane sets in the step editor in logic pro you can store combination of lanes as a lane set so you essentially you can have like um i don't know just the hi-hats and snares that could be a lane set and then just the kicks and the toms that could be a lane set and when you do that it just allows you to go back and forth between all the various lanes you can save as many lane sets as required in each project so that's kind of good to know uh the lane set functions let you limit the step editor display to only the required MIDI event types. So this is also a way of just cleaning up the screen. For example, imagine you have a record synth. You could create a lane set that contains individual lanes for each note, which is probably the most common. Drag each note event step vertically to adjust its level with the same lane set. You could create two or more lanes that control the lead synthesizer's filter cutoff and resonance parameters. That's what I was trying to look for, but I could not find it. So, um, I guess we'll pro what we're probably going to get into now is figuring out how to perhaps add um, various parameters. So like, let's say you can't find whatever it is. Um, how do we add more to this? Here's high pass filter frequency. There's a lot of data here, right? 127 MIDI. Let's keep going. Um, so there are two default lane sets you have midi controls which gives you volume pan modulation and other common controller types and then um, you have the gm protocol which is going to match the note names of the general midi drum map this option lets you draw note events for drum parts and is similar to the use of pattern based drum machines where each beat is manually entered on a grid Use this lane set for any instrument type. So let's just check these two out and see what are the benefits. If you leave the lane set pop-up menu set to automatic, lanes are automatically added for the each kind of event in the MIDI. Okay, so let's check out MIDI and GM drum kit. So we're going to go, um, I guess we go here, lane set, MIDI controls. Okay, so let's, uh, can we adjust the screen a little bit? Yes. All right, so we get pan, we get modulation, pitch bend, all the stuff that you would expect. Uh, let's listen. Let me, let me erase this uh, value here. Let's erase all that. Cool. Let's keep going. All right. So then let's say you were like, yeah, I want to create some kind of change, uh, maybe from here to here. So I'll go to zero. And then just create a bend. Let's go down, what, let's do 24. I'm thinking this is going to be in semitones. Let's listen. All right, and then we have to reset it back to zero. And then bear in mind what it said earlier. Like, hey, you might want to do it beforehand so it can adjust. So I'll do it right before uh, the, the, the downbeat. Let's see. So that's where that pitch band came in right there let me see if i can erase after touch te eraser tool the eraser tool plays a big part here if you're going to use this i usually don't even use the eraser tool at all um but there it is right there let's use the uh the gm drum kit another way for you to look at this okay so that now these are the names of all of the various drums and so if you just want to add a tom or what have you you can do all this here let's listen back now why is this happening well we don't have drums selected right so if you're using drums this may be a better picture for example when i was using drums earlier and i select this and uh here let me just make sure yeah this looks right 
So again, we'll go to GM drum kit. All this is reflected in the step editor. Let's watch this. Got the wrong part of the song playing. Let's go here. It's saying, hey, do you want to add hand claps? Right, this is really good for note on and off information. Really easy to work with. Let's try this out. Maybe I'll add some close hi-hats from here to here. Let's check it. I love it. I think it's it's just like a it's just a, a big toy. You know, it's just a big game. Really, really interesting. Definitely have to spend more time with it, no question. But if you're not using drums, then you're probably better off. And you go back to the synth here. So I'm going to select it. Um, let's move the playhead to bar nine, and then let's select something else, not drum kit, but either MIDI controls, which makes a little more sense if you think about it. And then let's do MIDI controls one. Um, this. I think I made that one up by mistake. So yeah, MIDI controls is probably your best bet. Um, I, I really want to find something like filter cutoff or whatever. So let's keep going here. Um, so in fact, let's highlight this. I think that's probably one of the most important parts of this. If we want to switch between lane sets, uh, we could do that. Just go to choose a lane set from the lane set pop-up menu in the inspector. Um, lane set okay yeah so if you want to choose uh not you know midi controls are you know automatic seems to kind of do its own thing you can add whatever it is you want to add i personally like midi controls for synths and then gm drums for uh drums and again i believe this is all like logic stock or or companies that that are um sort of uh, accommodating this GM drum mapping technology. Uh, so let's see, switch between lane set. All right, we do, we've done all that. If we want to create a lane set, uh, we could do that here as well. The lane set, create a lane, right? You can create various lanes. Nothing is replacing anything else. We're just adding different ways to look at logic. Uh, if you want to create a lane set for a GM drum kit, um, so this is basically, let's define it. It's an established keyboard assignment pattern. So a MIDI note map that has uh, predominantly for drum and percussion sounds. Mapping standard is often followed uh, by samples, uh, samplers, synthesizers, etc. cetera. Um, so you could, if you want to create one, just go lane, new lane set for GM drums. So we go lane, new lane set for GM drums, and then kind of we're back to normal. But right now we have... Uh, new lane set for current events, which is uh, we have MIDI. Uh, we have a synthesizer, so I want to utilize that. Okay, um, if we want to define a hi-hat group, so there's something called a hi-hat group in a hi-hat mode. Lanes can be grouped together. All right, so how do we group these together? Only events from grouped lanes can be played at any ruler position. This function is typically used to prevent different hi-hat notes from being inserted at the same time position. So yeah, it's going to mirror the real world behavior of hi-hats, which can't be simultaneously open and closed. In logic, click the dot shown to the left uh, of the other. And, okay, so yeah, uh, if, you, if you start clicking these dots, it looks like it creates a group. So for example, I should probably do this with the drum thing. Let me move back here. So let me push here. Go back. All right. So um, let's look at lane set. We're looking at drums. Uh, okay. So let's say that these three were a group. Uh, so then what I'll do is I'll hit that blue button right there. And it looks like we have now what paired them together. If I bring them all together. Now they're part of the same thing. And what happens? Do they just choke each other out? Well, let's find out. There's a dotted link, which is created, right? All lanes in a high group must be vertically adjacent to each other. So that's important to note. Let's go ahead and highlight that. Um, if you add an event to any of the lanes, all existing events, um, 
in that time position are deleted. So for example, if I add a note here, theoretically, it's deleted up there. If I add a note here, it's deleted up there. So that's pretty cool. Never thought about that. You can create as many hi-hat groups as needed, but each group must be separated by at least one lane that does not belong to a hi-hat group. Okay, so it looks like you can have groups within groups. For example, here I have one group and you know I can create a third group here. And in order to create these groups, there has to be something separating uh, these lanes. We can rename the lanes, right? Hi-hats, just the kicks, just the whatever. Uh, we can clear the current lane set by go, go to choose lane, clear, current lane. Where is clear? Right here. So then we kind of start over. And of course, you can start create new ones or you can select something that's already existing, the GM drum kit, right? Um, you'll get used to it. I feel like you need to spend some time with it and then we should be good. How do we delete these? Let's say you were like, nah, I don't like this. I want to start over. You go to lane, uh, delete lane. Now, does that get rid of the part? That's the, that's the question there. So here, listen to the part just so you know what it sounds like. Uh, commands, uh, I'm sorry, shift command Z. Oh, wait, uh, lane delete lane let's see if it gets rid of it yes it did so if you're interested in just deleting one lane that's how you do it i wonder if i could just hit delete and oh it looks like it's deleting everything that's selected uh what if i just wanted to delete uh hold on just that one let's see um it's not deleting the lane it deleted the information but if you want to delete the lane itself again you have to go to lane and you have to go to delete lane set uh let me corroborate that one last time lane delete no not the set rather just the lane how do we delete just the lane yeah that's how we delete that okay that was deep i hope you enjoyed that content brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com i know it's not always easy and there are some days that are just easier than others i get that all right but that was not my commitment to you when we first started i didn't say hey every single day we're going to feel amazing it's going to be great we're going to feel like doing this what i said was we're going to do this we're going to do it all the way and we're going to master this program and that's what's happening if you're taking the notes if you're doing the work and even if you're just getting a big portion of it then that's a massive success i'm telling you you're going to differentiate yourself from everybody else when this is all said and done I've said this once, I'll say it again. Come out of this being more, doing more, and learning more. All right? It's very, very important. I'm going to catch you tomorrow. And tomorrow, we're going to get into the audio file editor. Now, whether you feel like it or not, we're going to get in and we're going to do the work. We're talking about destructive audio editing. If you've ever had any clicks or pops and you want to figure out how to eliminate those, I got you covered. See, we're going to be able to manipulate the waveform and play with its fidelity as well so we can resample a lot of very cool things in that regard but more than anything i'm teaching you and showing you how to be a professional that's really what counts so we're going to cover the audio file editor tomorrow and then last in the series is uh uh real quick transient markers we're going to learn all about transient markers and how they work um, if you use flex time, this should be super important to you as well. So many new things that I'm looking at here. It's quite remarkable. Um, when we're talking about reversing audio and um, uh, fades and how to properly apply fade curves. This is going to be money. I know there's really no videos on YouTube about how to create proper fades. And so again, brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com. This is going to be a long one as well. And look. I will be ready, okay? I'm going to teach you how to use an external sample editor such as RX7 or RX8, whatever you have. I really like a new editor called Fission, F-I-S-S-I-O-N. It's not new. It's new to me. And then we're going to go over MIDI transform the day after that. So look, it's time to go. Thank you very much. Stay happy, stay up, and always put the most important things in your life first. And this is why we're doing the work because if you're here, especially if you made it all the way to the end, it means that you're a warrior and you really, really want this. And I want it for you too. So I'm going to get out of here. Eddie Gray at your service. Keep winning.
and stay up.